visualizing physical security and public safety with Visual Command Center presented by Microsoft and IDV Solutions. I'm George Siegel with IDV Solutions and I'll be moderating the webinar today. We're going to start off today with Scott Koch from IDV Solutions. He'll discuss the results of the work we've done with chief security officers and their public and military sector counterparts to understand the challenges they face in physical security and public safety. We'll then move into a discussion and demonstration of a new physical security visualization solution called Visual Command Center that can help address these challenges. Microsoft was an early adopter of the technology and is using it on a global basis to protect their personnel and facilities around the world. We'll be hearing from Mike Levin at Microsoft on the challenges they faced and how they use physical security visualization on a day-to-day -day basis and manage response for crises that occur. Scott will then re uh, present Blue Water Area Resilient, a pilot project with the Department of Homeland Security that is taking public safety agency interoperability, situation awareness, and critical asset protection to new levels in their Michigan-Canada border region. And then we'll open it up for questions and answers with both Mike and Scott. So I'd like to start out today by uh, introducing uh, Scott Koch. He's the Vice President of Product Management at IDV Solutions. And he's been at the forefront of Visual Command Center's development. In his role, he's the primary messenger to and for the market as it relates to Visual Command Center. And he helps to manage the feature set and release to market of IDV Solutions projects. Scott? Thank you, George, and thank you everyone in the audience for attending today. I'm very excited to share with you what we're doing to help security organizations around the world keep their people and assets safer. And I'm excited to be on the call with Mike Levin from Microsoft, a true leader in the industry and someone who has spent decades on the front line protecting America's most valuable assets and, and is now at Microsoft helping to keep those folks safe. Uh, my, my goal for our time together today is to pique your interest and show you how we can give you a new type of situational awareness that, that you probably don't have right now and, and that would hopefully make you and your team better at keeping your people and assets safe. Uh, for many of you, today may be your first introduction to IDV Solutions, so I want to tell you just a bit about us. We're a software company working with many government and enterprise customers to help them visualize their risk in a very user-friendly and intuitive web application and then use that insight to make better, faster decisions. And we work with a nice cross-section of folks in the physical security and public safety spaces. In all cases, you see here, uh, they had distributed assets or a wide range of stakeholders which they wanted to unify. They all had all kinds of valuable information spread out across systems and across departments and across partners, but no good way to bring it all together. And, and that's really a pain point that our software ad addresses very, very well. There, there's a very common problem across the security world where there are more and more systems and data sources popping up that can help keep people and assets safe, but it's very difficult, if not impossible, to get a consolidated view of everything that's happening. In the physical security world, it, it's not uncommon to have all these different data streams coming into an operations center or a command center, but there's very little, if any, coordination between them. When you find out that a hurricane is gaining in strength and bearing down on the East Coast, how do you figure out exactly what facilities and personnel are at risk, and, and, and how long does it take you to figure this out? If a bomb goes off in London or Oklahoma City, how do you figure out the proximity of your buildings or travelers, and, and how do you get a message out to them to check on status? Can you immediately reference floor plans and protocol documents for each facility from the same interface? And from that same interface, can you see where your security vehicles are right now in proximity to all these other assets and, and which one might be able to respond the fastest? Well, this is exactly the problem that Visual Command Center was created to solve. It brings together all the relevant data from internal systems and external feeds and visually consolidates them in the unifying context of maps, timelines, and analytics. Visual Command Center gives the complete picture for all of these data sources providing the global view to see how weather and other incidents like terrorist activity impact your assets around the world. And it also lets you zoom all the way down into the floor plans of your buildings and see status on access control points and video from your cameras, as well as all the views in between. And we'll see that in, a, in, a, in the two demos that we have lined up for you today. Visual Command Center also gives you access to all this information in whatever form factor works best for you, PC, tablet, smartphone. And, and the form factor you probably want is, is all of the above. 
so Visual Command Center essentially provides all this as a, as a sock in the box capability. Um, and I say that in that it can be taken mobile via a laptop, tablet, or smartphone. So wherever you or your colleagues are, you can get access to all those valuable data streams that are important to your team. Another noteworthy aspect on, of this mobile uh, story is contribution. Your folks in the field can be taking pictures and uploading content from the ground, uh, while the folks back in the SOC are immediately seeing those contributions in the context of all the other data sources that they care about. Again, this is just adding to the overall situational awareness that Visual Command Center produces. Okay, I'm, I'm going to show you some specific use cases in a demo in, in just a few seconds. Uh, so now's a great time to point out that Visual Command Center is very flexible in terms of the types of missions that our customers are engaged in. And for those of you on the call, we'd love to dive deeper into some of the problems you are trying to solve and some of the ways in which you're trying to respond faster or, or get a better handle on all the information as quickly as possible. And we believe that Visual Command Center can really help with that right out of the box. Okay, so let's dive into a demo to show some of what I've been talking about. Mike from Microsoft will be demoing for a few minutes uh, later as well. And he's actually going to kind of go into some depth on some specific things that Microsoft is doing around incident response and looking at video cameras across the world. So I'm going to take a more generalized approach to my demo. And, and of course, I'd love to kind of do a one-on-one -on -one with, uh, with, with anyone that's in the audience um, if they're interested in doing that maybe after what they see here. So, so what you're looking at now is the PC component of VCC. And I, I'd love to demo the tablet and smartphone components, but, but for time's sake, we're going to have to just save that for another day, perhaps a one-on-one -on -one demo with you. But, but this is the PC component, and it's inside SharePoint with uh, Bing Maps as the main canvas. And, uh, and there are really three primary views of the data within this interface. There, there's the geospatial view of the data that you see on the map. And this is being mapped so I can obviously kind of zoom in and I can pan around and, and, and do all the things that you would expect from a web mapping app. Um, and I can also hover over a particular point uh, to get a bit more detail or, or click on it to get even more detail um, so I can interact with all those features on the map. The second view of the data available to me is down here in the timeline. And this actually functions a lot like the map in that I can pan and zoom inside the timeline. Um, I could, I could uh, you know, mouse over one of these individual data points, click on that to get more data content as well. Uh, the third view of the data, what we would, what we would call the analytics view, is, is, is over here on the right. And we, we call this the feed control, and it's the place where you see all the data sources available to you. And of course, these could be coming from in, anywhere. Internally, we're pulling from SharePoint and SQL Server and other data sources, databases. And externally, we're, we're pulling from, from the web, from Bing Maps web services, from premium data providers, from partner data repositories, basically just wherever there is information that can help us keep our people and assets safe, we want to be tapping into those sources. Um, okay, and so for each of these data sources, I can go ahead and drill down into, um, into, into the content. So in this case, I'm going to go inside of threats. Uh, this is actually provided by um, a, a premium data provider, a partner of ours called the Global Incident Map. I'm going to go down into this area of terrorism. These are the guys that I'm, I'm showing on the map in the timeline. And, and I want to point out for a second um, that you can, uh, when you're, that there's a, there's a coordinated view between all three of these data sources. As I mouse over something in this list over here, I'm seeing it uh, highlight on the map and in the timeline. And then when I mouse over it in the timeline, I'm seeing it on the highlight on the map and in the list. So there's a coordinated view. And it really helps me as the user um, to be able to interact with all the data and kind of always know where I'm at, uh, both in space and in time, and then within the uh, the analytics over here. And this is a very a list is obviously the most simple type of analytics there probably is, but we have charts and graphs in libraries as well. And that that brings me kind of, kind of to the next point, which is um, kind of um, oh, you know kind of uh, attached to all three of these views is some other infrastructure. And it's things like uh, the tools library that we have up here. And you'll be seeing Mike and I kind of pick out a couple of these guys and demonstrate them as, as we move along. Um, it's data filters that I can apply to any of my data sources to help me kind of drill down into the actual things that I care most about. Um, it's the charts and things like charts and graphs that I mentioned before. But there's a lot of supporting structure that all comes right out of the box um, that you can, with, with Visual Command Center that you can use right away. 
Okay, so let's start talking about the visual scope of VCC for a second. With VCC, you can literally go from the globe all the way down to a cubicle in a building and, and anywhere in between. You're, you're not limited to just the global view or just the floor plan view. You can go anywhere. For the purposes of this demo, I want to think about three vignettes, a macro view, a metro view, and a micro view. And at each of these three, uh, each of these three vignettes, we're going to look at three very important superpowers that VCC gives me. I'm going to have the power to consolidate the data. I'm going to have power to interrogate. And I'm going to have power to act. So consolidate, interrogate, and act. All right, so let's start at this macro level. I'm actually going to transition from uh, showing some of these terrorist suspects to maybe more of a, a, a weather-related feed. Um, and I'm going to, I don't need my timeline for right now. Let me kind of zoom in here to the east coast of the U.S. Um, but at this macro level, um, let's, let's first talk about this power of consolidation at the macro level. And, and at each of these levels, there's going to be different types of things that I want to consolidate. And at the macro level, um, the things I care about most from an external perspective are probably things like weather, incidents, news. But I, but I really only care about them um, in a way that, in terms of how they relate to my internal data, right? Like my facilities or my travelers. So it's the intersection of these points that, that I really care the most about. Um, so I'm going to go ahead within Visual Command Center, kind of open up my facilities layer so I can get a good view of, of what we're looking at. Um, I can see I have 52 items in kind of my map view right now. Um, but really the ones I care most about um, are the guys within uh, this, this uh, projected hurricane plume. Let me go ahead and sort my data maybe by a different thing. Let me go, I'm going to sort this by, by, uh, for, by name here. And these are all the different names of, of the, the locations of my facilities. But like I said, the, the thing I care about most is which ones fall within this predictive plume. So then Visual Command Center is very easy for me to find that out. I just click on the plume, I, I, I turn it into a spatial query, and immediately my list of 50 some odd items is trimmed down to five. Uh, so I've been able to, uh, to assimilate the right data. I've interrogated that to find out, hey, these are the five that I care about the most. These are the ones within this plume. And then I can send, and now I, can, now I want to act. So kind of just built in here, it's a very simple way to take an action. I'm going to click on a send message. Sorry about that. I popped up in a different screen. Let's try that again. Um, I'm going to send a message, and that's going to pop up an Outlook email with all the POC um, email addresses of the folks in those five buildings. So again, this is a very simple kind of integration point. Um, obviously, there are other things we could be doing, like kicking off workflow, doing some other form of communications, kicking off some sort of report, reporting that we're going to you know, send up the chain of command. But but it's very easy to kind of take this action and then maybe send these folks a, a note like, hey, um, you know, enact your hurricane protocol. You know, we have, uh, hur this is historic Hurricane Irene. We have hur Hurricane Irene, you know, bearing down on you guys. Um, so again, that's just kind of one example of, of that notion. Um, and so I, again, I, I took a, a, a polygon that kind of came in from an outside source, a, a weather source, and I, and I used that information to create uh, a query. I could also uh, just do a query kind of on my own. Maybe I want to take a little bit wider scope in terms of the risk. So again, it's basically the exact same thing. I create this query. Now there's 12 items that fall within that. Uh, so very easy for me to do that. Or perhaps I want to use um, some state boundaries. Maybe I want to go state by state. So let me switch to my, uh, to my state boundaries. Um, so as these states come up, then maybe what I care about, I care about South Carolina. I care about uh, North Carolina. Let me bring that guy up, care about North Carolina. And I just want to see all my buildings that fall within those two areas. Okay, it's just one, the office in Charlotte. So whatever the case may be, whether it's kind of uh, stuff coming from the outside, internal stuff I have, I can uh, very quickly, um, or it's an ad hoc kind of shape I draw, I can very quickly kind of get down to the information that I care about the most. Okay, so that's kind of the, uh, the, uh, the, the macro view that I wanted to get to. Let's switch to... Um, Let's switch to a metro view. And I'm actually going to go into a, a tool called Favorites. And this allows me to go into very specific uh, vignettes or things that I've created um, that allow me to, to take a look at my data. Um, and uh, so at this point, I've kind of zoomed into New York. Um, I'm actually going to refresh my screen for just a second. Um, and we're going to kind of bring back this view, hopefully, uh, right away. But in this metro view, again, I care about uh, three different things, right? I want to be able to consolidate the data, I want to be able to interrogate the data, and I want to be able to act on that data. Um, let me just go ahead and turn that guy off. Um, so at this level, again, the, the, some of the, 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 the data sources that I care about in terms of consolidation, 
from an external perspective, I still care about the weather. I still care about, um, you know, incidents. I still care about uh, news. But now I also probably care about things like um, uh, traffic congestions and traffic cameras. On an in so in this case, you know, we, we see a cluster of buildings down here at the tip of Manhattan. This is my campus. Um, and I can go ahead and just kind of mouse over um, some, a traffic camera. And again, this is another premium data provider that's included with Visual Command Center showing me what traffic looks like on the FDR or showing me what this intersection looks like at West and Murray. And this is a live look at, at what's happening in New York right now. Um, you can also see some of the roads are shaded green and red and, and, and yellow. That's actually a Bing Maps uh, traffic overlay, so I get a sense of congestion. Um, as you can see, I've shown some employees around the map. Um, we, we've done some interesting things with customers where we actually, based on an employee residence and based on where the campus is, we plotted uh, likely commutes for employees. And this really allows me to do things like, hey, I know that the Holland Tunnel is going to be closed. Maybe I want to be proactive and send out a note to folks. Um, you know what? Seek a different, uh, a different route into work today. So, you, so I got trimmed down from about 150 folks down to about 50 who take the Holland Tunnel. And again, I can just send that same kind of email I mentioned before. But, but to show maybe some, some different ideas about what you could do at this metro level uh, in terms of, uh, in terms of um, interrogating the data and, and taking action. Let's think through a scenario where, where you know, um, Jeremy Lin has led the New York Knicks to a world championship. And, and there's, you know, there's some civil unrest during the celebration about, about what's going on here. And I have my, my campus down here in lower Manhattan. I'm kind of concerned about uh, what folks are doing. And, and one thing I happen to know is that in times of civil unrest, some of the, the places that are vulnerable uh, are places like pawn shops and sporting goods stores. And I need to be concerned with those because that's where guns are, right? So um, if there's enough unrest and, and folks are not behaving the way they should, there's a potential for somebody to go into a pawn shop and, and steal some stuff. And then that kind of escalates, you know, my concern. So I want to make sure um, that there aren't any pawn shops right near where my, my campus is, just, just so I'm aware of what's going on. So what I've done up here at the top is is besides the data sources that have kind of been provided, um, you know, by whoever put this app together, as the end user, I can actually add more data in an ad hoc manner. So what we've done is, is we've kind of wired this up to different uh, APIs, uh, other things. So, you know, we see Bing Maps, we see Wikipedia and Flickr. I could also wire this up to, like, say, the, the Twitter API and do a search on, on a certain thing that's coming on Twitter or, or something like that. I, any of these things I could also kind of bring in as a default mode and just have some really hardcore intelligence and, and robust um, activity around them. But, but just from a simple search pr perspective, let me go ahead and type in uh, something like a, a, a pawn shop and just see how if uh, Bing Maps can return any information about those guys. We'll, we'll label those as green. And it does look like, surprise, surprise, there's a couple up on Canal Street. These look like a long way away. Uh, cash daddy buyers, you know, appears to be, you know, far enough away from me that, that maybe I don't have to be too concerned about that. Uh, but as the but as the end user, having that flexibility to kind of contribute data to all of this, to kind of interrogate the data in that way, contribute. And as you can see, I could also maybe <laughs> position contributing as taking action. Um, you know, it really helps me get a, a, a better understanding of kind of what's going on. And then at this point, of course, I could do that same reporting or, or whatever else that that we had mentioned before. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and remove that guy. And let's go ahead and go into that third vignette I mentioned, uh, kind of that micro, that micro level. And again, at this level, kind of what we're consolidating are going to be all kind of the floor level details. Um, I'm sorry for kind of zooming in and out there. I'm just trying to find the exact right spot I want to show you guys. Um, but we're talking now about floor plans. Uh, we're talking about video cameras, um, access control points. Here's a live look at it, our parking lot here at IDV. Um, so bringing all this stuff together, so as incidents happen, and let me go ahead and turn on some incidents. So as incidents happen, I can get, a, get an understanding of where those are happening and, and maybe even jump to my camera to see what's happening or, or get some information from, um, from, the, uh, excuse me, from, from the access control system about that. So I brought up some incidents, and, and the, kind of the, the story I want to tell about interrogating the data or, or contributing to the data at this point is just how easy it is to add things with Visual Command Center. In this case, I'm just going to add um, kind of a new incident. Uh, it's just as easy to add things like floor plans, to add, you know, whatever, any kind of new assets. Um, 
So it's very simple with Visual Fusion to do this. And if I have permissions, I can do it. So I'm just going to click on this uh, adding a point. Uh, that puts me into a mode where I can drop something on the map. Let me just go ahead and put it right here on the corner of this building. Maybe if I don't like that spot, I move it over to a new location. And I say something like, you know, medical incident. Uh, maybe I put in more of a description. I, I select uh, my date and time. So this is happening, you know, right about now. Uh, so let's change that to 2 p.m. Um, and then I save that. And again, this form is just reaching back into your data construct and saying, okay, what attributes do we care about? So now, here is that new incident I just created. It's, it's in the spot I created. It's in the, uh, <coughs> of the timeline like I created it. It's, it should be in my list over here. Let me sort this by maybe time step, time stamp, and here's what I just created. So, so these are ready for me uh, to kind of uh, interact with and combine with all the data sources um, right now. Um, so, um, so again, with Visual Command Center, it's very easy to kind of jump from whatever kind of view makes the most sense. And then in each of those views, I consolidate the data that makes sense at that level. I interrogate it. Perhaps I can I contribute. Um, and then I act. Um, so George, I think you're ready for, I think I'm ready for you to take it back over. Great. Thank you, Scott. So let's do another quick poll here if we can. I'm going to go ahead and launch the poll. And uh, the question is, what challenges do you, our presentation audience, currently have at your security operations centers? And you'll see your possible responses on the screen. You can check all that apply. Uh, getting security systems connected and talking with each other getting all the security functions uh, in the organization to have a common view to share a common operating picture, blind spots or lack of awareness uh, to external events or things outside of your property line, for example, a slow response due to manually finding um, or in assimila assimilating information, um, or in some cases, not all documents uh, are online. So if you could just click all that apply to you, and as we wait for the last responses to come in, let me ask you, Scott, what was IDB Solutions hearing from its customers about these issues? Yeah, well, you know, I'm the one, you and I are the ones who came up with the poll. So these are really the types of things that we hear from our customers all the time. And, and it's really what, you know, we were aiming at when we designed and built Visual Command Center. Um, and we, you know, we had a lot of customers using our other software products to do kind of build out their own uh, Visual Command Centers. And so, um, we decided, you know what, we're hearing all these things from all these folks. Let's just go ahead and help them out and, and bring something together in a package uh, that they can quickly kind of assimilate within their own environments and kind of take that headache away from them. So, so yeah, we're, we're, we're really hearing all these things, and that's, you know, that's kind of the, the point about why BCC exists. Great. So we have results in from most of you and some very interesting spot responses here. I think... Um, you know what we what you've been saying and what uh, what our audience has been uh, experiencing in in their security operations center absolutely one and the same thing a little bit of challenges across all of these uh, different types of areas so I'm going to go ahead and uh, hide that poll now and uh, we're going to move into the next part of our presentation and our next presenter is Michael Levin he's the director at Microsoft's Global Security Operations Center Showcase also known as GSOC for the East Coast region. And Michael has an impressive background in security, more than 20 years with the Secret Service, counterintelligence and cybersecurity experience with the Secret Service and Customs and Border Protection. Uh, he was with the Department of Homeland Security. He was Chief Security Op Officer at United Communications Group and now with Microsoft. And Michael is also the current chairman of the Economic Crime Council for ACES International. Uh, Mike, I'm guessing that with that background, you've been at the front lines of just about every type of security situation possible. And we're eager to hear more about how Microsoft Global Security uh, and how physical security visualization is implemented there. Thanks, George. It's great to be here. I mean, you can look at that picture and see I have my game face on. <laughs> Absolutely. Mike, can uh, you give us an ex uh, idea of the scope of Microsoft Global Security's responsibilities? Yeah, absolutely. You know, Microsoft Global Security is responsible for protecting the people and assets of the corporation, and we're really a worldwide organization. And we have, uh, you can go to the next slide. We have 700 sites, and we're in 100 different countries, and we protect over 180,000 employees. And Microsoft Global Security works with several other branches at Microsoft, 
and we've established our organization as trusted advisors with all of the business groups at Microsoft and we must ensure the business continuity of the corporation by keeping the assets and the people of the corporation safe every single day. So, Mike, this uh, spans not just day-to-day -day security operations, but also things like uh, executive protection and investigations? Absolutely. So we have many different branches of global security, and uh, currently on the screen is some of our uh, divisions within global security. But obviously we have an investigation section, you know, dealing with thefts every day or uh, if employees get into a fight or something happens. We have an operations section, so they're dealing with the day-to-day -day events that occur in the facilities. Security consulting and technology, they're dealing with the hardware issues related to, you know, all the different sites, a hundred different countries, making sure that if a camera breaks in uh, India that we're buying the right equipment and that we're always testing new equipment to make sure that we have the latest and greatest technology. Obviously, security, education, and awareness is a big deal. You know, you spend a lot of money on hardware and software solutions, but you need to educate your employees to tell them what, don't click on that email that comes in from Gmail or some other uh, potential uh, source that uh, we don't want them to click on. Um, obviously, our executive protection and intelligence section is dealing with uh, making sure our executives and employees are safe. We have a large background uh, program and enterprise incident management. So if Steve Ballmer, your CEO, is traveling, you, you guys have his back, right? Absolutely. That's a big piece of the puzzle is ensuring that we're up to date in situational awareness to make sure that we have the information to ensure our people are safe. So, Mike, with people in facilities all over the world, um, you know, there are incidents going on every day, I imagine. Can you talk about the kind of events that uh, Microsoft GSOC deals with? Sure. Every day there's an event somewhere in the world that affects Microsoft facilities. Events like weather, terrorist act, political demonstrations and unrest are just a few examples at Microsoft Global Security, we're responsible to protect the safety of, and the security of all the Microsoft employees. And we must notify the affected employees within 30 minutes of an incident and also make sure that all of our decision makers are aware of the incident. And we do that through something we call the REN and a RIA. So a regional event notification goes out when the employees are being affected and a regional event advisory is to just give them an update to something that may be happening in the region that could potentially affect them down the road. So let's go back to the scope of GSOC's responsibilities for a minute. Can you talk about uh, some of the challenges from a scope perspective? Absolutely. We have a very mobile workforce and at any one given day on average we have about 4,000 Microsoft employees traveling and several times a year we have up to 15,000 employees and our top executives all in one location that have traveled there. And it is our responsibility to ensure that the organization and people are safe. So we need to, a way to keep track of our traveling employees and ensure that we can communicate with them if there's an event. The Microsoft campuses uh, are are in many cases, especially in North and South America, are very open campus. The Microsoft campus in Redmond, Washington is an open facility and it can pose very uh, complex problems related to security. We have 135 buildings with about 55,000 employees just in the Redmond campus alone. And we need to maintain a way to keep an open field of the campus with a strong backbone of security that can be stood up at a moment's notice. And we also have many facilities throughout the world and this is just some examples of some of our upper level of, of security locations. So we have over a hundred, we're in a hundred different countries so that in every country the security is a little different. Um, the ones that you're seeing here, like I said, are some of our upper level of security. And a couple years ago, we had a credible terrorist threat in our facility in Istanbul, and we hardened that target 
to the equivalent of what you may see at an airport where an employee may have a couple of checkpoints to get through security before they get to their office. So Mike, how have you organized yourselves internally to address the missions you've been assigned? So in response to all of the security responsibilities of the organization, we've created three GSOCs or Global Security Operations Centers and we have regional security managers and regional security advisors and investigators all over the world. We have our first ones in Redmond managing the Americas, North and South America. We have our next facility in EMEA in England and UK managing Europe, the Middle East and Africa. And our last one is in Hyderabad, India managing Asia and Australia. And you notice that these facilities, the circles are overlapping, and they, this allows for the scalability and load sharing and to ensure business continuity is always maintained. If one gets busy, we can fail over to the other one. Or if there's an incident in one location, they can focus in on those, all those issues, and then we can um, fail over or share the load with other facilities. So, Mike, what about once the hardware? Again, they're, Go ahead. No, I'm just going to say they're mirror facilities. So, if we do fail over, they have the capability of operationally knowing what to do. Great. So, what about the hardware and software that enables uh, the GSOCs to functions? What kind of systems, devices, and information are we talking about here? Well, the, one of the best parts of this puzzle is that everything is managed <laughs> on top. The Microsoft stack. And what that means is that you get to leverage the products that you already own. And that's huge cost savings for organizations. Uh, once again, the Microsoft stack mostly that we're using, you know, obviously Windows, but SharePoint, uh, Communicator, Link, Office uh, products, SQL Server, Bing Maps. I mean, these are just some of the, uh, the Microsoft stack. And we manage those with partner products. And we, we like to talk about the idea that you don't buy a widget that doesn't work with the rest of your stuff. They're integrated to all work together. So our emergency notification system works with everything else. And, and, and our, the VCC, the IDV uh, product that we're talking about here also today, is tightly integrated with all of our other Microsoft products. As I understand it, Mike, uh, all these systems around the world, I mean, that was kind of the issue for Microsoft as far as having a grasp of the big picture or a common operating, a uh, common operational picture goes. Right. We use the VCC to aggregate all of the data web parts that are out there on our network to help our people visualize the information and make very fast decisions. And one of the things that um, we use is a SharePoint dashboard page, which many organizations already own SharePoint, to pull this data together in the VCC. And it allows our security professionals <coughs> to stay on top of situational awareness and make decisions much faster. You know, it's kind of similar to watching a police TV show where you have a crime spree, like a robbery spree or murder spree, and the cops always have in the TV show a map with the pins on it which show all the locations of the crime and it helps the investigators to make decisions related to the investigation. It's very similar to that. Great, thank you Mike. Are you still able to uh, demo Microsoft's implementation of Visual Command Center for us today? Absolutely. Okay, great. I'm going to uh, give you control here and uh, can you take us through some scenarios or workflow perhaps, um, how your team might respond uh, using Visual Command Center to some situations? Absolutely, I'd be, be happy to. So what you're seeing now is a, a SharePoint dashboard page layered with uh, Visual Fusion, uh, the Visual Command Center, and Bing Maps. And I've already clicked on the showing all the Microsoft facilities and I and those are the blue uh, rectangles that you see in various locations on your screen and I also clicked on a feed from the US Geological Survey 
which is going to give me all the earthquakes that have occurred in the last seven days. So I'm just showing you a, a 5.3 earthquake that had occurred in, uh, in uh, Mexico, off the shores of Mexico. And I'm concerned about the idea that maybe this earthquake has affected our facilities in, uh, in the uh, Central American area. So I have an office in Guatemala City, in San Salvador, and even down here in Costa Rica. And so very quickly I want to know, well, how many employees could potentially be affected? So I'm just going to do a little uh, circle around those locations. And uh, very quickly, you can look over here to the right of the screen. And I know immediately that I have 133 employees affected. And my square footage for my facilities is 29,000 square feet. And if I need to dive down farther into the location, I can pull up the data file for that office and start making notifications for, to that office. So it becomes a very rich picture for our decision makers and our people that need to start notifying employees. Right, so, so, now so what I'm happens go next, Mike, from an operational workflow standpoint? So from an operational workflow standpoint, we have the capability of sending out a regional event notification or regional event advisory to the affected employees and even check having a uh, capability of having them get back to us to the command center letting us know via text message or via um, email whether or not they're okay or if they need help and we do that on a regular basis with our employees when we have an incident so now I'm gonna show I wanna show you uh, I have pulled up one of my favorites bar and I've uh, identified the Redmond campus as one of the places that I wanted to show you today. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the Redmond campus and just kind of give you an overview. So all of the blue rectangles are different Microsoft offices. And as a matter of fact, I'd like to show you Building 120. So I'm going to click on Building 120 and I'm going to zoom into that location so we can see it. And you're able to see very quickly that I've got a overview of the schematic of the building so I can kind of have a general view and that could be as detailed or as simplistic as you want it and one of the things that I want to do is I want to click on a uh, camera that's on the roof so a lot, all those squares that you see are cameras that are in the lo location and once again this is a live uh, demo and so I'm going to go to a live camera feed um, and I want to show you uh, we'll get a chance to see what the weather is in Redmond today. Hopefully it's not raining. But I'm just going to pull that up and I also want to mention that I'm doing this wirelessly. I'm sitting in a Microsoft office and I'm connecting to our network wirelessly. So it's not taking up a huge amount of bandwidth. And then you see uh, I just pulled up a, uh, a car there uh, a couple blocks away from our facility. And I'm just going to see if I can zoom in to that location. There we go. Oh, unfortunately the cars are moving. So let me just zoom back. That's what happens when you have live demos, right? <laughs> so that's really I'm neat. Zoom back. Do you also have the ability to see interior cameras through VCC? Yeah, absolutely. So that gives you an idea of um, you know the capability. Let me show you um, our, our our command center in Redmond. So this is a, an actual live shot of our command center in Redmond and it actually gives you an, a, an idea of inside that building 120 things that are going on. Uh, I can see that live. And I had mentioned previously um, you know, the, the issues related to security. And one of the things that I wanted to show you is um, we talked earlier about um, this location. Actually, it's this location. And I'm going to show you the commons. So um, we showed in the slides a picture of the commons and how we need to have uh, with the open campus a feel of no security with the strong backbone of security, and this is an example of that. 
I'm able to pull up a camera and I'm going to show you the exact same picture but I'm going to show you live the actual commons area. It's just taking a second to populate the map and there it is. You're going to see it in just a second and we have the capability of you know identifying issues and, and looking at people as we need to in that location. Mike, what do you think the difference has been in terms of response because of the uh, integrated common operating picture you get with Visual Command Center? Well, obviously we can really respond faster in incidents and we have a much better capability of responding in situational awareness. We, ha we have events occurring every day around the world and we're able to identify um, incidents and respond to them and and certainly we uh, when we bring up one of our emergency response teams we can we can give them the information much faster and great how about from um, the business side what other benefits have you seen there um, we're able to leverage um, many things and it really provides a, an amazing uh, picture for our, our, our decision makers. Um, many of the organizations that already own the Microsoft stack are able to now leverage this information and provide um, the full capabilities um, and reduce their response time they also have the reduced dependency on the IT department which is huge. Mike, thanks very much for your time and sharing your expertise this afternoon. Um, are you able to stay on for some questions at the end from the audience? Yes, ab absolutely. I wanted to mention also that um, it's really a win-win situation because you're able to leverage the technology that you already have and um, come up with some partner products that will work a lot better for your organization. Great. Thanks, and we'll look forward to those uh, questions and answers uh, at the end of the uh, demo in just a few minutes here. So we've seen Visual Command Center at work in a global but private sector setting, helping to keep people and buildings protected. I'm going to turn it over uh, to Scott Koch of IDV Solutions again to talk about how Visual Command Center translates into public safety with federal, state, and local agencies or military commands. Scott? Thanks, George. And uh, thank you, Michael, for a great, great demonstration of VCC in action at the Microsoft Global Security Operations Center. At this point, I wanted to take just three or four minutes before we get to some Q&A to focus on public safety, and specifically what the US Department of Homeland Security is doing with our products to foster the integration of disparate stakeholder groups, as well as the integration of technologies. So what DHS has done is partner with St. Clair County in Michigan to implement Visual Command Center for all the surrounding agencies and responder groups that want to be involved. Now, now this is a border location with Canada, so we're talking about the, the local police fire and ambulance services, the county sheriffs, the state police, uh, border protection, customs enforcement, you know, just to name a few. Plus, they're integrating folks from the Canadian side of the border, the, the Border Services Agency, Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Lambden County, City of Sarnia. So, so as you can see, there are a lot of divergent players involved, and each one has its own procedures and, and makes its own technology decisions independently. So, so all the vital data between all these groups was fragmented and spread out among different software systems, databases, spreadsheets, documents, and, and even three-ring binders in different locations. So, so much of it was unavailable to all the other partner agencies, and when, and when they did share it, it was often incomplete or, or not very timely. So, so emergency personnel found it difficult to see any situation as a cohesive whole. And, and, it, and it should be noted that this is it's a pretty critical border crossing. Port Huron is a, is a busy border town, close to 6 million vehicles moving between the U.S. and Canada annually. Um, it's also number three uh, in North America in terms of an entry point for hazardous, radioactive, and flammable materials. On top of that, this is a huge chemical production region, and, and there's about 30 major pipelines crossing the border at this point, as well as the traffic, and there are 12 water filtration plants servicing millions of people. So, so needless to say, this, this really represents a huge terrorist target, and, 
And more generally speaking, it's a location vital to U.S. Canadian commerce. Well, I'm happy to, to say that the implementation started over a year ago and was quickly up and running, and, and it's already a huge, huge success. All, all the responders are now poised for a coordinated response to a major event, uh, but, but they're also seeing benefits in many, many small areas as well. They, they call the system resilient, and they use it for all kinds of day-to-day -day activities like 911 response, looking at various webcam feeds, managing regional, uh, regionally available resources like hazmat teams and canine units, and simply plotting the locations of all those resources that become very important in critical moments, like, like the locations of all the facilities capable of delivering medical services, and, and all locations and owners of heavy equipment, and, and all the locations of especially vulnerable populations like child care centers and nursing homes. It's, it's providing this incredibly complete commanding overview of all the major and minor information sets that they feel important to have at everyone's fingertips, whether, whether you're local, state, federal, or, or even Canadian. So, so uh, these guys at the DHS and St. Clair County, they're, they're great advocates for us. And if you're interested in uh, this particular application of Visual Command Center, um, there's a real nice view of benefits on the next slide and, and kind of the bridge there at St. Clair County. Um, but if you're, if you're interested in, in this kind of application of Visual Command Center for use by a group of agencies, then I, I'm pretty certain that uh, these guys would be willing to talk to you about their experiences and uh, kind of talk about the, you know, the hurdles they had, the, the benefits that resulted, and, and things of that nature. Great, thank you, Scott. Uh, we have time for a few questions. I see a few have already come in. Uh, if you have any questions, you can go to your Go-To Meeting Council. Just look for uh, the little questions bar there in your council, and you can go ahead and type in a question and enter it. And I see a few um, have come in. We'll take as many questions as we can, uh, or you can email us at the contact information uh, on this next slide here if we don't get to your question. Uh, during um, this Q&A session. So uh, the first one, let's see, the first one's come in and it's thanks for the information about the DHS. Um, how could this be used in other homeland security or national defense missions? And maybe uh, let me throw it to Mike uh, for a response on this one. Yeah, absolutely. I, I mean, uh, I wish that we had some of this technology when I was uh, at Secret Service, but you know, if you think of uh, some of the incidents that occur or uh, large uh, events that are occurring, planning of the events, I mean, I was thinking about uh, the inauguration coming up eventually here after the election. Um, you know, for an example, like if the Secret Service had uh, advanced teams out in the Washington, D.C. area, um, they were looking for, uh, you know, incidents that are occurring or crime that's occurring, they could graphically be able to see that. They could know where all the hospitals are, where all the um, police stations are graphically on a map. Um, they could be able to un identify weather events that are coming in. They could know the crime statistics or the crime information uh, real time uh, on the screen so that they could see that kind of information. It would really help them to make a decision. For Homeland Security, for example, you, uh, if you wanted to know all the ships coming into a port, you could graphically see the ships as they come into the port. You could uh, graphically see what was in the hulls of the ships. You could see all the cameras in the port. You could see the crime statistics and the weather. And that's just some of the examples of the many ways that uh, this type of technology could be used. Um, once again, you're using the Microsoft stack in conjunction with a partner product and you know, frequently organizations maybe use 20% of uh, something like Microsoft Word. So it's basically raise the bar, use the products better, and leverage the uh, partner products in a better way. Yeah, Mike, this is Scott. I'm, I'm going to kind of jump in on this one as well. So as you had said, you know, companies are going to kind of leverage what they already have, and which is great, or agencies leveraging what they have, which is great. Um, VCC, you know, we kind of have a, a little bit different flavor of it for public safety. Um, we're working in conjunction with DHS. We're actually building out a usage connector. Uh, so that's going to be um, data that's available. It'll be bundled in just like we bundle in uh, weather and traffic and, and global incidents and, and, and many, many other things. We're going to be able to bundle in usage, which is great. Um, so that, 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 for those of you who don't know, that, that stands for Unified Incident Command and Decision Support. 
And it's kind of a, it's basically a ubiquitous data feed that all agencies can use to funnel incidents through so that everybody else can see what they see. And, and it's kind of just a way to, a great collaboration tool. And so that will just kind of be part and parcel of VCC, Visual Command Center. And uh, so we're really excited about getting that to all, out to all the public safety customers we have. So here's another question that's come in. Uh, how easy is it to do the camera integration like we saw in Mr. Levin's demo? Yeah, so this is Scott again. So yeah, with Visual Command Center, um, I'm going to say that it's pretty easy. You know, there's a couple of caveats here, but, um, but basically we, we do integrate with VMS. Um, as you saw in the demo, we, we essentially we link to the web client of your VMS. So if your VMS has a web-based client that's accessible, and if your cameras have kind of location attached to them right now, um, then basically we can, we can do it right away. Uh, and, it, and it's pretty straightforward to do, just as Microsoft did. Um, so kind of part of Visual Command Center we haven't really talked about is what's, it, what's included with the solution would be the notion of a one-week installation and deployment where we come onto your site with a couple of folks and we get you up and running with Visual Command Center. And in terms of, hey, am I going to be able to see my cameras working at the end of that week? Um, you know, uh, it's likely that that's going to be the, the case if you have, you know, a web-based VMS client and if the location's already ready to go. If you don't quite have locations ready to go yet, then we can get you started. We could probably do like a floor or two and uh, kind of get you rolling on the process on how to bring all those cameras in. If you don't have a web-based client, then we're going to have to talk about, you know, what it would look like to, um, to make that happen. That's probably going to be outside the scope of that first week. But, but if those two caveats are met, then, yeah, we can get you up and rolling pretty, pretty easily, pretty quickly. Uh, here's a similar question, I think. Which access control systems is Visual Command Center compatible with? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a very similar question to the VMS question, access control. So again, um, during that first week of deployment, what we could potentially do is have uh, your locations of access control kind of uh, put on the map and have them displaying status, you know, a door jar or forced entry or whatever it is, whatever your statuses are. We could display those statuses during that first week as long as your, uh, you have a, an accessible SQL server back into your access control. Um, and, and then the second caveat, of course, is as long as you already have kind of locations tied to your access control points. And, and if you don't have those locations, again, we can, during that first week, we can get you rolling. We, we, can, we can show you how to quickly kind of start adding those into your different facilities, and we can get something up and running for that during that first week. Uh, most likely. Um, but if you're outside the scope of kind of what I had mentioned in terms of, you know, we can't really have ready, ready uh, it's not readily accessible through SQL or, or you just don't have any locations at all, then, um, then yeah, that, that, that one we probably have to take um, as an as a additional project or, or kind of give you guys a, a, a framework of how to move forward in that, in that case. Yeah, if I can hey. jump in real quick, I can add that uh, you know, I've been amazed as a user of the product how fast we can get feeds available. Uh, we recently were doing a presentation for um, a governor in Brazil, and he wanted to know uh, in his uh, area if there were, you know, the new cases of dengue fever, yellow fever. And within two hours, we were able to pull that feed in so that he, we could show him um, updated feeds of dengue fever in the Brazil region. So it was really a, a very fast, uh, uh, you know, feed that we were able to pull in, and it really uh, provided a lot of value for them. Great. Here's a question about training, um, and let me rephrase this a little bit. Uh, Mike, in your command center, you have people around the world on different shifts. How easy or difficult was it to train the operations staff, the GSOC staff? Yeah, it's real easy and one of the things that uh, is very important for operation centers and for a lot of security practitioners that have a wide variety of responsibilities is you don't want to have to constantly be retraining these folks and luckily it's all web-based and so our training time was very very fast and then if someone you know works the command center for a while or is using the software and then goes away for a couple weeks or three weeks or a month or whatever and comes back, they, they don't have to be retrained and they're up and running very fast. So the training time is very, very limited, very, very short. 
So uh, here's one. Uh, do I need to hire an integrator for this? And what is the typical install, configure, and test? I guess that means time, the amount of time to do that. Yeah, so this is Scott um, from IDB. So I think I have mentioned, you know, um, that you can you, you essentially, with the purchase, get a, a week of install and deployment. Uh, so within that week, we're going to get, you know, everything basically you've seen here is going to be up and running. Um, so all the kind of premium data feeds that we have, um, all the kind of the tools and everything that's available out of the box, getting your buildings up, uh, if you want to, you know, show your, where your employee residences are, things like that, based upon your VMS and your ACS, I've kind of already talked about getting that up and going. So that's generally the time frame. Uh, in terms of other people doing that, that we're, we're certainly open to that. We have partners right now um, in both the security space and in, in other types of integrators who work with our products and, and work with their customers to make our products kind of work in their environments. And uh, that's certainly something that, that we can do as well. Um, if you really, really wanted to do it yourself without any of our help, you could probably do, you could do that as well. Um, we're, we're open to that. Um, but we love coming on site, getting to know our, our customers really well. Um, making sure that any of those glitches that kind of sometimes happen within IT environments that we're there to help kind of help you work through those. Um, but that, that's, I think that's probably the best way to answer that question, George. I think we've got uh, time for one last question. And uh, the question is, is there an API uh, such that custom providers can be created to provide data to VCC? That's a fantastic question. The answer is yes. So we have all kinds of connectors that we've pre-built so that you're ready to rock and roll as soon as you get the product. But we also have an SDK that allows you or us or a third party to quickly create an additional connector to kind of whatever data source you care about. There, we really haven't ran across anything that we can't connect to um, and bring into the to Visual Command Center. Um, so the answer is yes, you can create other additional connectors to data sources that we haven't mentioned here today. Great. Thanks, Scott. And uh, thank you to our audience for attending today's web with Visual Command Center presented by Microsoft and IDV Solutions. Scott and Mike, thanks so much for your time this afternoon. You're and very welcome. It was great to be here. And for more information and for more in-depth demonstration of Visual Command Center to your team, please contact IDV Solutions or your Microsoft Federal Representative, and you'll see some contact information on your screen. And you can also see more at IDV Solutions website, idvsolutions.com. Have a great day.